Leeds United season is going off the rails away from Elland Road. Embarrassed at Histon, they travelled to Birkenhead, needing to put their season back on track. Peter Stevenson reports. The road back to the championship has become a little rocky for Leeds United. One of the big promotion favourites are approaching the halfway mark in the season, plagued by inconsistency after a bright start. <laughs> I hate to say it, but I don't know whether McAllister's the one. Expectations were high, you know, we thought we'd be walking it by now. I think problems at defence. We've had a few disappointments recently, but I think uh, we'll get there in the end. I think we've got a good manager, we've just got to give him time and not get impatient. Leeds went to Tranmere desperate to forget last week's cup defeat by Histon, but were missing four key players through injury and suspension. Ronnie Moore's side needed to win to stay in touch with the playoff contenders. Leeds had the perfect start. An early Robert Snodgrass corner was flicked on by Fraser Richardson for Enoch Shawumi to steer the ball home. But Tramir was soon level. Andy Taylor's free kick tempted keeper David Lucas, but neither he nor Richardson could prevent Rovers skipper Anthony Kay from heading in the equaliser. Despite the cold, Leeds fans tried to warm up their side. But just after half-time, they were stunned by a spectacular second Tramia goal. Moore's son, Ian, once at Ellen Road, drove in from long range and enjoyed every second. Plenty for McAllister to ponder. Leeds thought they'd equalised from a corner, but Luciano Becchio was penalised for a push. So, a vital victory for Tramia, but another setback for Leeds. There's no doubt about it, we're going through a little bad spell and generally in bad spells things don't necessarily drop for you. We're not getting the rub of the green, but we'll keep going. You know, where we are sitting in the league at this moment in time suggests that we're, we're a wee bit short. You know, and, and come January, if, you know, if the right people have become available, we'll be, we'll be ready to pounce. Because you've got to get up, haven't you, really, this time? Well, we've got to get up. You know, it's, it's failure, it's simple as that. There's no in-between, you know, it's, it's, it's up or nothing. What a strike. I mean, you know, you can't write the script really, can you? He scored at Leeds last year when he first came to the club and he, he's got us the winner today. Is that something you coach or is that natural ability from your genes? I think it's come from the genes. Maybe his mother's side, not my but... <laughs> It was a far more sombre mood on the Leeds coach as McAllister headed home empty-handed, no doubt mulling over who to buy in the January sales. Great win there for Tranmere, Ian, wasn't it? And a great strike by Ian Moore. Terrific and I just strike. doing well. Terrific strike. It's surprising because I've seen Leeds a couple of times this season and they passed the ball really well. I mean, I like Betcho, you know, he's, he looks a, a real handful. So a little bit of a sticky patch, but as, as Gary McAllister says, that you've got to ride through these and if they come strong second half, you'd see them challenging all the way. Tranmere aren't very far away now, are they, no, really? Not you know, at all. Just they're, they're uh, creeping up behind Leeds. Very much in there, you know, but at the moment they've all got to chase Leicester. So, um, but yeah, this is a fantastic strike. I mean, it just. It just moves away from it last minute. In fact, he has a history of scoring decent goals here more. It's got to be hard playing for your father, hasn't it, as well? I know it does happen and we've seen it a few times, but you've almost got to be the best player, haven't you? No, you have. I mean, even in the dressing room, <laughs> you, you've got to take fearsome amount of stick, but uh, he, he copes with it well, I'm sure. You, on Leeds, Chris, you know, Gary McAllister there lost eight of the last ten away games in all competitions. If things aren't going quite right, they're usually not going quite right, first of all, away from home, aren't they? Yeah, that's right. Um, I'm surprised. I'm, I'm honestly surprised. I'm like Gary. I saw them against Crystal Palace. Uh, like Ian, I saw them against uh, Crystal Palace and they were fantastic. They outplayed Crystal Palace for long, long periods of the game. So they're ready for the championship. But the problem is they've got to get out of League One first. And uh, Gary knows that. You know, he's under no illusions. He didn't hide the fact there. He didn't say, well, you know, we'll see what happens this season. He said basically it'd be failure if he doesn't get promotion. He expects to get promotion. Beckford's out at the moment. He'll be back soon. And, you know, I, I, still, I still fancy him. Still but you can get out of League One by playing football. Swansea did, didn't mm, they? Absolutely. Look how well they're doing. Yeah, Swansea were excellent at the time, and I think Leeds are a similar vein. What, what Gary will have isn't a big problem is when Leeds come to town, it's a big, it's a big show. And whatever you say, that, that makes a difference. Everyone ups their game 5 and 10%. On the away games, yeah, mm. sure. Have to see the best of two more Tuesday night replays. We start with the League One sides, Tranmere and Peterborough at Prenton Park. Nil-nil at London Road last month, and it took until the second half for the deadlock to be broken here. Rover skipper Anthony Kay capitalising on some poor Peterborough marking. After that, it looked like the footballing gods were conspiring to deny Darren Ferguson's team. Aaron McLean, the first of three players to be thwarted by the woodwork. 
Substitute Dominic Green next to suffer the fickle finger of fate. Rovers keeper Danny Coyne nowhere near his excellent free kick. And when George Boyd smacked the upright nine minutes from time, it looked as though Ronnie Moore's men would hold on for a lucrative third round tie at West Brom. But four minutes into stoppage time, and with the home fans ready to celebrate, Peterborough finally got a break. McLean's scrappy effort won't win any goal of the season contests, but in financial terms alone, it was to prove invaluable. Because deep in extra time, and with penalties looming, Craig McHale Smith diverted in Charlie Lee's shot. Moore described it as a fluke, and it was rough on Rovers, who'd earlier hit the woodwork themselves. The victory margin might have been even greater after Andy Taylor hit his own post, and Tony Mowbray beware. Posh are now unbeaten in 13. Bristol Rovers brought the curtain down on a run of five games without a win and they took the lead against Tranmere with an impudent goal from Joe Four, who after nicking the ball off Andy Taylor backheeled his in after getting in front of Ben Chorley. This was Tranmere's fifth defeat on the road so far this season and it's something that could hinder their playoff hopes. Paul Trollope's team confirmed their first victory since the end of October when Chris Lyon strolled forward to score his second in three matches. Scunthorpe secured their place in the Northern Area final but left it late. They were ahead when striker Ben May headed home and Ian Morris free kick inside the opening half an hour. Tranmere levelled early in the second half with the goalkeeper committed. Ian Moore was left with an inviting target. His angled drive was perfectly struck. Deep in stoppage time, Rovers defender John Johnson deflected a free kick from Paul Hayes into his own net. Tramia are now only four points off a playoff position following this injury time victory over Brighton. And the drama began when Ian Moore hit the post and keeper John Sullivan spilled Chris Shuka's rebound into the path of the scorer Anthony Kay. It means Brighton haven't won a league game since the start of November. Tranmere are now unbeaten in three matches after this victory over a Walsall side who stood back and watched as Rovers took the lead just before the break through Ian Goodison. Goodison last scored 33 months ago. But a clumsy second-half challenge from the 36-year-old Jamaican defender on Jabo Abiri resulted in referee Lee Probert giving the Saddlers a penalty. It wasn't a difficult decision for the referee to make. And Marco Wright took the spot kick to make it 1-1. But Jimmy Mullen's team fell to their third defeat in five games because in the third minute of injury time, Mullen says his players switched off again. Some good work from Ian Moore saw him get the better of Net and Sansara. And Moore's cross was side-footed home by Anthony Kay. The victory leaves Tramia just four points outside the top six. A special presentation before Millwall's game with Tranmere to Neil Harris, who became the club's record goalscorer last Tuesday, beating Teddy Sheringham's total of 111. Harris couldn't add to his tally against Rovers, but the Lions kept up their promotion challenge with the game's only goal 17 minutes from time. It was nicely worked as well. Dave Martin eventually found space to cross, and Mark Laird arrived to head past keeper Danny Coyne to inflict Tranmere's first defeat in four games. After a fairly even first half, Tranmere took the advantage at the start of the second with two goals in four minutes against Carlisle. Ian Moore outmuscled David Raven before firing past keeper Ben Williams to put Rovers in front. Tranmere were in search of a third consecutive home win and a second goal put some distance between the sides. It came from an unlikely source. Aussie defender Gareth Eds with his first goal for the club and by the Cumbrians' defence. Carlisle weren't about to let their format tonight, and they pulled the goal back after an hour. Paul Thurwell's high ball and dropped over keeper Danny. But Ronnie Moore's side went on to equal their biggest win of the season to leave Carlisle boss Greg Abbott bemoaning his side's defence. Stephen Jennings made it three to emphasise Abbott. And with 13 minutes left, it was 4-1. Cleveland Taylor was dispossessed by Adrissa Sonka match and seventh of the season to set Rovers up nicely for Tuesday's clash with Stockport.